Well, I am not Adam Reed, even though it says I am in your bulletin. And there's no if, sir. I know. I usually have a lot more time to prepare than I did for this one. <laughs> uh, well, Adam, uh, Adam let me know on Friday that he was... Uh, battling a, a cold and uh, his head was all stuffed up and so uh, he's still battling that uh, continue to pray for Pastor Adam and uh, he's probably watching me right now to make sure I do this right and uh, yeah he's laughing but this is not uh, Ephesians part two and uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, never losing coverage Today, and I'll explain what that uh, means and uh, why I chose that in a little bit. Um, but uh, I'm sure uh, uh, Jerry Black and Adam Reed are both uh, looking at the weather coming up and saying, Yes, Lord, thank you, because it's supposed to cool down um, in the next few days. And uh, they both love uh, cooler weather. And uh, so we have to enjoy today, I guess. Um, uh, with that. Um, you know, I was thinking because I looked over and I saw Jeff over here uh, and and bef and he was last week, I think, I, I can't remember, he was sitting over here somewhere and uh, the time before he was somewhere else and and uh, he just likes to drive pastors crazy trying to trying to figure out where people are sitting. I, I was listening to a Christian radio station and the, the um, person on there was saying that their church was, this is a couple weeks ago, and their church was coming back together in person, and he said, as a pastor's kid, he, he grew up, uh, his father was a pastor, and he said, as a pastor's kid, I knew it, it drives pastors crazy when you sit in different spots, because they can't look and find you when, when they're looking for you, and he said, this Sunday, I'm going to sit in a completely different spot than I normally do just to drive the pastor crazy. So thank you, Jeff, for, for, for doing that. <laughs> um, you you try, try your best, don't you? Um, how many of you desire encouragement? Now, Everyone should have their hand up, but probably only about 50% raise their hand. We, we should. We should be those that want to be encouraged. Why? Because there's so many things out there that we can be discouraged about. Amen. You know, I look in the mirror and I can get discouraged, you know. Um, my, my daughter, I forgot to show my wife this. Uh, my daughter sent me a whole bunch of pictures yesterday of me back when I was skinny, had hair, I had a mustache, uh, I was holding her in every picture that she sent. She must have sent about six of them. And um, I said, who is that skinny guy with that? And she goes, don't you like that stash? But, um, you know, she was, she was tiny. But uh, discouragement uh, can take a lot of forms. And uh, I want to encourage you today want to take uh, some time just to give you some things that maybe will encourage you. Um, we're living in, uh, can I say weird times? <laughs> Strange times. And um, Gal, how many of you have had a COVID test? Look at that. Didn't you enjoy it? Because we had one lady come into our service center, into our building, into my office building. We had one lady come in, and she tested positive. I had to go get a COVID test. And I hear that the COVID tests are very different from, you know, different methodology uh, taking place. This one, this nice nurse came right to my, the window of my truck and she had this long wooden stick. <laughs> and uh, she said, um, if you have to cough or sneeze, let me know before you do. 
But I'm going to stick this up your nose, <laughs> and I'm going to leave it there for a little while, and then I'm going to twirl it around, and I'm going to take it out and put it in the other side, do the same thing. And that's what she did, and she stuck that wooden stick up my nose and scratched the back of my eyeball, I think, and uh, made my eyes water, and, uh, and then went to the other side and did the same thing. All right, this is... Um, and then she said, have you had any symptoms of COVID lately? And I said, other than my eyes watering, no. And she said, well, that was my fault. So, um, but it did come back negative, by the way, just in case you're wondering. And uh, we thank the Lord for that. But things like this can be discouraging. My ear is not fitting this very well as I turn my head. But um, sorry about that. I want to talk about never losing coverage and never being out of access to God. That's basically what I'm going to talk about. And um, I was thinking, because I've been driving north a lot, and as I drive north, I hit trees, and I get into the kind of the wilderness, and in hills and valleys, and my phone loses signal. Isn't that fun? <laughs> well, it's not fun when you're talking to your 94-year-old mother, and all of a sudden, you lose her. She's not happy on the other end when I call her back. <laughs> um, but losing cell signal or, or just being in that situation is something that can be discouraging and frustrating sometimes. Um, at our hunting property, um, sometimes I have to go out in the open field to get away from the trees and maybe even go up on a hill a little bit to get cell coverage. And... Um, even though we just switched to iPhone 11s, it's worse than my iPhone 6 for, for, uh, for um, signal up there. I don't know why. I don't understand the technology of it all, but it seems like it would be better, but it's been worse. And uh, so yesterday I was up there and I, at one point I had to, go not only out in the field, but up on a hill uh, to be able to, I was sending a picture to my wife of the beautiful trees and the leaves and everything. And uh, uh, in order for it to be delivered, I had to go in the field up on a hill to do that. I hadn't had to do that before, but uh, had to go quite a ways. So there's no electricity there. It's at a dead end road and then plus back quite a ways into the woods. And um, so it can be a little bit frustrating on that end. I'll just share a little story with you uh, of a person. Um, name was Joseph Oldendorf, and he was running in Washington's Olympic National Forest when he slipped on some ice and broke his leg. He had no cell coverage. And he didn't think he could get cell coverage for quite a way, so he started to crawl. And I don't know when he started to crawl, but he finally got crawled hour after hour after hour and finally got cell coverage and called 911. And that was about midnight when he finally got the 911 connection. At 4.30 a.m., he was airlifted to the hospital. You can imagine how discouraged he must have been, but he fought through it. Spiritually, I think we can be in the same situation. Maybe not a broken leg, but maybe broken in our spirit maybe just discouraged, 
maybe just uh, you know something that's going on in our life that we're wondering how to handle. Could be a COVID test, <laughs> you know. Uh, little, we're all a little bit um, leery of certain things, um, wondering about. Um, so how do we maintain? Instead of like our cell phone coverage being lost, how do we maintain connection with God? Or how can we be encouraged that we do have connection to God? Excellent coverage, excellent connection, excellent access to God and his service should be important to us as Christians. So we should do everything possible, I think, to keep that connection. It's almost like you would expect to buy a new spiritual cell phone to connect to God and have it being better than the old one, right? That's why I shared that is I thought, you know, this is fancy-dancy new uh, technology is going to solve all the problems. Well, that didn't solve all the problems. But I worship a God that can solve all the problems in my life. What's the problem then? Maybe, yeah. No, it's me. I was going to say, it's me. I'm not making that connection. I'm not pursuing that connection. And many times that's the case. I was listening to, uh, as I was driving yesterday, I was listening to uh, a, a question being asked on, um, by some Christians is, who is God? And it was interesting that uh, it kind of fit into what I was sharing here today, and so it's kind of scary that I wrote some things down in my notes because you, you know what that means. It's going to take longer. But... Um, um, who is God? And then the one guy said, you know, most people today are not asking who is God, they're asking what is God? And he said, to me, that's idolatry. Because, and I'm going to go off on two rabbit trails at, at once here. My wife and I have been watching this, I don't know if you've seen this show alone where they drop these people off in the middle of the wilderness and they have to survive. And, uh, and uh, many of them, um, when they get something that they, you know, for food, many of them say, thank you, fish. Thank you, plant, or whatever they're eating. If you've watched it, notice that. It, it, it said something to me. It's like they weren't saying, thank you, God, for providing. They were thinking that this fish actually had something to do with providing them food, when actually it should be God. And I wonder how many things today are that way. It's more, you know, thank the environment or thank all that. And, 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 you know, that's part of it because God created all those things. But give him the credit for the provision. Um, and watch that we're not thinking that somehow the thing the, um, has something to do with it and putting it in a place of God to be thankful to or to worship. So it's not the sun that we should worship. It's not the sun we should be thanking for our weather. It's God. It's not the water. It's not the deer. It's not the plant. It's not the rock. It's God. I'm very thankful that I worship a God who's personal. A God that's a who and not a what. A Jesus Christ that is my best friend. A Holy Spirit that I can go to any time. Can talk to the Father at any time. 
a who, a personal, one who knows me better than I know myself. That's why I can always go to him. It's because I have a warped sense of who I am sometimes. He does not. He created me. It's like if you build something, you know every little intricate detail of it. You know all its flaws. And you know where it's strong and where it's weak. When I build something, I look at it, and, and my wife can attest to this. I'll say, oh, I should have done X, Y, Z. And she'll go, nobody will notice. I said, yes, they will. Me. I will see it every time. Every time I walk in that room, I'm going to go, oh, gee, I should have done something about that. Well, God looks at me, let's say, and says, ooh, there's a little flaw there. I'm going to do something about that. <laughs> he is. So he puts me in situations to try to correct that little flaw. He allows certain things to happen. And we're going to talk about that. I don't want to, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm going to talk a little bit about my own life here. I'm, I'm going to read out of the NIV, um, New International Version, Romans 5, 1 through 2, first of all. And we're going to kind of dissect this, um, this two verses of Scripture. It says, and I'm, I'm going to stop every once in a while here. So it says, therefore, I think, Pastor Dan, tell me if I'm correct. Was it Bob Mumford who used to say, therefore? Yeah, he used to say, if you see a therefore in Scripture, see what it's there for. <laughs> and I, I've always remembered that. So every time I see therefore, I always look around, look at the Scriptures before it, look at the Scripture after it, see what the context is to see why, why do you say therefore? So he says, therefore, and now he's going to explain it. Since we've been justified through faith, so, you've been justified by faith. Some, someone else that we used to listen to used to say, justified means just, if, if, just as if I had never sinned. Justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. God wipes things away. So, since I've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast, or some versions say rejoice, so we rejoice or boast in the hope of the glory of God. Now let's back up and say, so therefore, we're justified by faith, and we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. We have peace. We should be at peace in the midst of all the things that are taking place around us because he allows things to happen for a reason. In the midst of those things, we should be at peace saying, just show me, God, why you allowed all of this to happen around me. Help me to respond in a godly way, in a kingdom way. It says we have gained access, how? By faith. So he wants to build our faith, faith, <laughs> build our faith too probably, by faith into grace in which we stand. Have you ever fallen? Physically or spiritually? <laughs> it should probably be yes to both, right? Yes, I have. I've still got a sore knee from where I fell not long ago. Actually, <laughs> and no, I'm not going to show you, I've still got bruises, four of big ones on this leg from three weeks ago. 
about three weeks ago. <laughs> I heard that. I'm not going to repeat it, but he said it sounds like he needs a walker. But anyhow, um, not only do they drive you crazy sitting in a different spot, but it's the little comments too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I know, I know. And as my wife would say, you deserve it. <clears throat> so, um, if you give it out, you got to be able to take it, right? And I give it plenty, so <laughs> I like people that give it back. So, um, boast and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Boy, often, often. I say, what would this life be like if I didn't have the hope of the glory of God? If my life didn't have hope for something beyond this life, and even beyond some of the situations, what's, how, how are you going to get me out of this situation? Um, what do I have to learn before I get out of this situation? Hope brings me through hope. And there are so many people that lack hope. We should be ready to share hope with this world that's in hopelessness. With our Lord, we never have a blackout area. He's always there. I'm just going to we're not, I'm not going to show you these scriptures, but I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures. Ephesians 2.18 says, For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now, if there would have been a therefore there, then you would have probably seen, well, what, what, what do you mean, we both? Well, he had just been talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Those near and those far away are in the scriptures prior to that. So he's saying both the Jews and the Gentiles and those near and those far have access to the Father by one Spirit. Ephesians 3.12 says, In him and through faith in him we may approach or you could put access in there. We have access. We approach God with freedom and confidence. Freedom and confidence. As scummy sometimes as my life is. Scummy. I don't know. That just kind of came out. Um, can I say scummy in church? I don't know. But um, I did. And I said it twice. Um, we have freedom and confidence in God. Never let, you, no, never let yourself feel stranded and alone in a crisis. We always have access to him. You have un uninterrupted access and communication with your Heavenly Father. Don't let anything stand in that way. We're all screw-ups. I've screwed up plenty of times. Probably before the day's over. We'll do it again. Because we're all sinners and we continue to sin. But, Pastor Adam, watching this, he always says he likes the butts in the Bible. It's the one T, but though, okay? Just clarify that. But he supplies ample grace and forgiveness as we stay in close contact with him. Even though we screw up, even though we're sinners, we have access to him. Even when we stray, he's still by our side, just waiting for us to come to him. 
King David, great man of God, did he screw up? Oh, big time. He screwed up. I don't know if one screw up's bigger than another, but he screwed up. Um, so he's a great example. I'm going to read Psalm 32, uh, verses 4 and 5 to you. This is David saying this. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was zapped as in the heat of the summer. What do you think that, what do you think was happening right there? What word would we give that? What was God doing to David? What? He was getting his attention. That was conviction. He says, man, can you imagine? I mean, have you ever been there? God's hand can be pretty heavy. <laughs> Duh. Um, he's God. But he's saying, night and day your hand has been heavy upon my strength. My strength has been zapped like the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover my iniquity. I said, I'll confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Now, this is almost a year after his adultery, after he... Um, conspired to murder the person, the husband. Almost a year. I don't know when the heaviness started or all it entailed, but it was a long time after the sin. And yet he says, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Because he confessed, then... And only then was he forgiven. Now, some might say, well, he only confessed because he was found out. He, he, somebody finally found out that he, he had sinned. So, <laughs> I've been there. I've, I've, I've looked at a person and said, the only reason you're confessing your sin is because you found out. Doesn't matter to God. Shouldn't matter to us. And so David finally confessed to God and God forgave him. There's another but, but God forgave him. We should also. It was said, and I don't know by who, but it was said that the way to cover our sin is to uncover it by confession. How does our sin get covered? Through the blood, the blood of Jesus. Covers that sin, makes it as white as snow, Scripture says, by confession. So most countries have statute of lim limitations for crimes. There's no statute of limitations for the forgiveness of sin by our God. That's something to be thankful for. If it takes a long time, it's not the best method to choose, but there's still an opportunity to be forgiven. 1 John 1, nine. If we confess our sins. Now, that's a big if. If you, if, you know, sometime if you got your Bible, circle that if. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I memorized that scripture early on as a Christian. I, I may have memorized it in a different version, but... Um, if we confess our sins, that's the first part of it. And I think I, at that time, if I remember right, in the Bible I was reading in, I, 
I uh, highlighted or did something in, in color. If we confess our sins, then I went, he's faithful and just, the second part, uh, to forgive our sins and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because those parts have a lot of weight if you confess your sins. He will be faithful and just to forgive your sins. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Man, you can circle and highlight words in there that are key to our peace with our God. But sometimes we need a little nudge. That's conviction. Sometimes we, if you're like me, you need a good kick in the behind. Anyone relate to that? Yeah, okay, yep. If you've heard the way I came to give my life to Christ, you can understand how stubborn I really am. It took God allowing a physical situation and me to cut my thumb off, the end of my thumb off, to come to Christ. I had had, lo I had, had lots of opportunities. I had had a lot of people share with me. Some people bent over backwards sharing the Lord with me. I had a lot of people that were great examples around me. But I always kind of held back. And finally, in the midst of that pain, I said, God, if you take away this pain, I'll serve you the rest of my life. And then I always tell it this way. I said something like, shoot. <laughs> something like that. So, hmm, it went away. I was not expecting that, and then I said, what did I just say? It's been a battle ever since then to fulfill that statement. Sometimes we need a little prodding. <laughs> little girl was um, running. She had her um, best little dress on. She was running to her Bible class, and she was wondering if she was going to be late, and she was praying, oh, dear Lord, don't let me be late. Kept running faster and faster. Don't, don't me, Lord, don't let me be late. And all of a sudden, she tripped and fell. Ripped her dress. Dress is dirty. Got up, brushed it off the best she could, started running again. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be late. Lord, please don't let me be late, but don't shove me again. Sometimes we need a little prodding. Sometimes we um, need a little nudge. Not necessarily God didn't push her over, but I thought it was a cute little story anyhow. Um, God allows everything to happen for our good. We need to repeat that over and over and over again for his glory and to further his kingdom. That thumb is a constant reminder to me. It looks a little funny, but I'm very thankful for it. Because God is near to us, He's always ready to respond to our needs. It might not be the way we wanted it to be or thought it would turn out or anything like that. But he knows best. Therefore, when we're in those situations where we get discouraged, we need to talk back to the enemy and let him know we're not a failure. We're just a screw-up. And God's working on us. 
And he wants to take us out of that discouragement and encourage us. Deuteronomy 31.6 should be our a good, a good scripture. I'm going to mention Deuteronomy and Joshua here in just a minute, but I'm going to read po- a portion of this uh, Deuteronomy 31. Uh, verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Here's another part that I read years ago that I went through and highlighted, be strong and courageous. I don't know how many times it's in uh, Deuteronomy 31 where Moses is telling the people this, but numerous times. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Who, who, who are the them that he's talking about? They're just getting ready to go into the promised land. <laughs> the giants. Yeah, they're all... I'm sure they're going, yeah, but did you see? I mean, did you hear the report? Did you see how big they are? I mean, we're just little guys. He says, hey, basically what he's saying is, your God's bigger. God will be with you the whole time. He will not leave you or forsake you. Question is, for me and for you, what are the giants in your life? Be strong and courageous. Small stones have major effects. Remember David? Small little stones, big giant, boom, gone, giant's gone. Small stones. So small steps might be the answer to getting out of your situation. Small steps have major effects. God's faithfulness, God's access. Sometimes we let our emotions rule us instead of the Word of God, instead of the promises of God. I know that's my case. Look for some, if those things occur, my suggestion is look for some scriptures that address those problems, those emotions, and have them ready when you feel that attack. Don't be unprepared, in other words. What are the things, the promises that you can read, you can mark in your Bible, or you can write on a 3 by 5 card, or type into your computer, or put on your cell phone. Oh, just realized my cell phone's on the... It's no wonder I felt funny. Um, put in your cell phone to be able to address the things that are troubling you. If it's sadness, if it's anxiety, if it's fear, if it's confusion, instead of turning your attention to the emotions behind all of that, the Word of God, promises of God. That's why, again, just about every time I preach, I think I mention, that's why we put on, my wife and I put on the armor of God every morning. That belt of truth is very important, you know, for the armor of the Roman soldier or the soldiers of the time, that belt kept in place the tools for a victorious battle, held everything together, held the, the, the shield, the, the breastplate I'm sorry, the, the breastplate of righteousness, it was connected to the belt. They put their sword of the Spirit in the belt. So everything was ready for the battle. That's the truth of the Word of God. So it's the belt that's important to fight with. Two chapters I mentioned that uh, I would suggest just to read. And I'm just going to read little 
phrases from the two chapters, not the whole chapters, but Deuteronomy 31, we already talked about. But here are some things I just pulled out that are mentioned uh, numerous times in this whole chapter of uh, Deuteronomy 31. It says, you will take possession of the land. If God's promised you something, that's the land he wants you to take. Think about that. Just like the Israelites going into the promised land, he's got a promise for you. You'll take possession of it. The Lord will deliver them to you. So again, small stones against the giants. Be strong and courageous. That's mentioned over and over again. Do not be afraid. Mentioned over and over again. The Lord goes before you. Mentioned over and over again. He will not leave you or forsake you. Mentioned over and over again. That should be encouraging alone. In Joshua 1, it says, in, in, in very um, similar terms in some cases, I will never leave you or forsake you again. God's speaking that to them and to us. Meditate on the book of the law. He's telling us meditate on Scripture. That's why to have those ready and available. If you know it's going to come again, be prepared. He sa- he, you know, so he says, meditate on it day and night. Do what is in it, and you will prosper and be successful. Have you ever asked yourself why you're not prospering and not, why you're not successful in something? Maybe it's, maybe it's you shouldn't be there, or maybe you shouldn't be doing it, but maybe it's just that you're not meditating on the Word. I'm guilty. Joshua 1 also says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And it says, do not be terrified or discouraged. God will be with you wherever you go. Some of the same phrases over and over again. So, in summary... Some takeaways. We have access to God through faith. We have peace with God. Or let me say it a different way. We can have peace with God. We have access and we can have peace because of that. We can stand and not fall, I'll add. We can stand because of the grace of God. If God gave grace to King David, if he gave forgiveness to King David, if he gave grace and forgiveness to Paul, after all Paul did, wow. If he gave grace and forgiveness to Peter, what a screw-up. which I can relate to, I probably would have been Peter. Then he also can give grace to us. Rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Rejoice. Conviction, here's a statement I was thinking about. Conviction is God's rescue team for our life. He sends conviction in to rescue us and save our life. Confess our sins and he will forgive us by our grace, by his grace, I'm sorry. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you wherever you go. In other words, you're always connected. You always have signal. You can always talk to God, no matter where you're at or what you're doing. Amen? Let's pray. Father, just thank you. Thankful for um, that we 
are never out of, out of reach of you. Help us to take down all the barriers that um, stand in the way of our connection and coverage and our care that you want to give to us. We can be strong and courageous because you're with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you for that. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Well, God bless you. Enjoy the last warm day for a few days, sounds like. And uh, enjoy one another. Be connected to God, his access. If you have prayer needs, I'll be up here to pray for you. And um, uh, just rejoice in the Lord.